Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request. This is for uh, QID 1314937, uh, a Kaplan question. There is no better QBank out there than the Kaplan QBank. If you don't have one, I highly recommend it as a paid supplement. The best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. But with the Guru 10 discount code, you can get a Kaplan QBank for about 60 bucks. Uh, Guru 10 discount uh, code at checkout. I also recommend the quick sheets. Those are very helpful as well. Those are about 20 bucks. For that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on Kaplan content. We will help you with any question from any vendor. It's just even easier if it's a Kaplan question because I can bring it up uh, backstage. All right, QID 1314937. One of your customers takes a short position. The two positions you can have at a brokerage firm are a long position and a short position. And so I borrow 300 shares. Key point, whether I borrow money or borrow securities, I need a margin account. So here I'm borrowing 300 shares to sell short. Uh, immediately, I should think, wow, maybe I should consider some risk mitigation here because there's very few things that expose you to unlimited risk and selling securities you don't own is one of them. Daniel Drew, legendary Wall Street speculator, said those that sell what isn't his and must eventually buy it back or go to prison. So if I'm wrong here, there's a finite supply, potential infinite demand of the stock, and it goes up. Anyways, the sales price was 70. Now, again, if you follow uh, my process, uh, I really want you to be able to track money in and out of a, a customer account. So we're set up our T, fire up the T, money out versus money in. So when we sell this at 70, that's money in. I don't use a plus sign, but I know some people do. And so I'm trying to be helpful in showing you what this looks like with plus minuses. I brought in $70 a share. Now, again, I highly recommend you do things on a per share basis. I just think the T gets very messy. If instead you're putting 70, you're putting three times, what is that, $2,100? What a mess. So I would suggest you do things on a per share basis. One month later, with the stock selling at 73, uh-oh, the stock is going the wrong way. And so uh, this investor purchases three LOP September 75 calls at three and a quarter. Very smart, putting in a ceiling. Options are about floors and ceilings. This is a protective call. It's protecting me against the short position moving up. So now anytime I want, I can buy back the borrowed stock at 75 by exercising the call contract. Very smart thing to do. And that protection cost me three and a quarter. What is the investor's break even? Again, I wouldn't have put three times three and a quarter times a hundred. That'd be a mess. What, $975? Please note, I do things on a per share basis. Here, it's a good thing I did it on a per share basis because break even is expressed as a per share number. So I'm probably uh, guessing that's what got this test taker into trouble. That rather than doing something on a per share basis, they we're trying to put $2,100 what a mess. Uh, break even is expressed as a per share number. Now, if you get good at the T, tracking money, you don't need to memorize anything. So, you know, you could memorize that, you know, plus minus I net, right? I brought in 70, I paid out three and a quarter. And so my net there is my break even, which is 67, uh, 66, 75. But what I like about the T is you get that, you can just uh, shop your answer set and know that it's a number that if you plug in offset, because you know you sold it, you're going to buy it, that it would make the columns balance because that's what break even is. Same dollars out as dollars in. You know, you neither make nor lose money. Now, nobody does things to break even, but that's what that looks like, right? So, boom, that is our break even. I think the more likely scenario on your exam, higher probability is just to recognize that there are two risk mitigation strategies that would change uh, or mitigate risk. One is to buy the call, because now I've changed the position from unlimited risk to limited risk. And the other is to enter a buy stop order. So those would be the two risk mitigation strategies for a short stock position that I would be aware of as a test taker. All right, I hope you found that helpful. Remember, inch by inch, your series seven is a sense, yard by yard, your series seven is hard. And I'll see you for the next explication request, if not sooner.